My name is Michael, KB9VBR, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we run net control operations for a Skywarn severe weather net here in Marathon County, Wisconsin. Marathon County is located approximately about 90 miles west of our Warning Coordination Office, which is in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the local National Weather Service office in Green Bay. So it makes it a little bit of a challenge communicating with the, with, with the National Weather Service office because of their distance but um, we handle it pretty well here in our, in our neck of the woods. Now, the way we run our Skywarn nets is we have a two-person operation. One person is always in net control, and then another person is designated as the liaison for the uh, National Weather Service office. The liaison will stay on a, on a UHF repeater connected via the IRLP to the National Weather Service office in Green Bay, and uh, the net control station will stay on a VHF uh, local weather net frequency. Uh, the net control always communicates with the operators in the field and then relays that information to the liaison and the liaison will then relay the information to the National Weather Service opera operations. Uh, this ensures that we've got a good continuity between all of the parties, the, uh, the people in the field, the net controls and the weather office so that we're not, so net control is not having to uh, interface with uh, two separate nets. That's so why we like to use the, the two-person net control and liaison situation. Uh, like I said, the, we use the IRLP to communicate with the National Weather Service Office. Uh, when, it, when a severe weather looks imminent, uh, we will connect to the uh, Wisconsin Reflector. Uh, many uh, and other nets in the area will also connect with the Wisconsin Reflector, so we can listen. So not only are, uh, is the Weather Service listening to us, but they can hear other uh, local liaison, local weather nets and liaison traffic uh, in the in their uh, warning region. For equipment, what we're using to uh, uh, run our nets is, of course, dual band radio. We've got the Kenwood dual band radio here. The VHF is on one side, the UHF is on the other side. Uh, typically, I'll just be monitoring uh, the liaison net, but most of the, most, as net control, most of my attention is focused on the VHF side of things. I've got the UHF in case uh, I need to uh, take over on the, on the liaison or just want to monitor things, see what's going on on that end. Uh, for computers, we're running a, um, I just run my, my, my uh, notebook computer here uh, with uh, Google Drive uh, connected with uh, the liaison. The liaison is also running Google Drive and we use a simple spreadsheet for all of our logging and uh, I, we love Google Drive. It's, it's a great collaborative tool that Net Control and the liaison can use to uh, communicate uh, one another. We can uh, see updates in real time. Uh, we can do handovers. If one other person has to leave the radio for a short period of time, uh, the liaison can take over or the uh, net control can take over liaison traffic uh, during those um, short periods of time when uh, somebody has to get up and away from the radio. So it's, it's a great continuity, uh, great tool there. We've got great continuity. Uh, we never lose a piece of information uh, because it's always, it's always right in front of you um, in real time. And then also, uh, the, of course, the, the radar applications, GR Level 3. Uh, runs great. We've got that running, a copy of that running behind me here. I use that to position spotters in the field to see um, weather as it's, as it's coming, uh, to look at storm cells and uh, gauge their impact, make sure we've got our limited resources in the best area. Now, Marathon County is a very big county. We cover a landmass approximately the size of Connecticut. So using sophisticated tools like these, like, like GR Level 3, is really critical in that we get our spotters in the in the right location. We don't have have as, a lot of spotters out there, but uh, you know if, if we've got if we've got six or eight spotters in the field um, in a in a large in a large area like that, we want to make sure that they're in there in the best location. So GR Level Three works great for that. Then we've got mapping mapping applications. Google Maps works great. Uh, we use APRS.fi to track any of, our, any of our mobile stations that may be running APRS so we can see their locations in the field. Uh, also, we've got you know, printed maps, of course, to use as a, as a backup. And talk, speaking of backups, backups, you know, uh, redundancy is very important to us. In the five or six years we've been using Internet technology, the IRLP, and now um, the Internet collaborative tools, we've had, um, had actually very good luck with, um, with running, running these during weather nets. I'd say in, in, in the five or six years, we might have lost power once, uh, internet connections once. So it hasn't been, uh, hasn't been a problem using, using internet applications as part of our overall uh, weather spotting net control, net control applications. And of course, with the two-person nets, if one person loses power, the other one can always, always take over. 
uh, we can bring another net control or another liaison into the situation, share the documents with them. They've got everything in, in front of them. Uh, in the case of a, in case of a power outage or an internet outage um, or, or whatnot. So, uh, with the decentralized nets like that, you know, it's it's easy to to recover and, and things like that. Of course, multiple repeaters, uh, simplex, lots of lots of different. Um, uh, redundancies and of, of course the uh, the landline or the cell phone if we need to contact the weather office uh, through those means too so my name is I'm like I said I'm Michael KV9 VBR uh, just giving you a rundown of how we run our severe weather nets in Marathon County Wisconsin thanks for joining me today